Guy Benson. She couldn't see it. Everybody else could, Guy. Good to see you. Hey, Dagan. Look, she lost because she's been a disastrous mayor, where in a deep blue city, the vast majority of voters rejected her. She came in a distant third place, could barely get into the mid-teens. The results speak for themselves. And you made the point. This is a woman who made a big deal in her last election of being a woman and black and gay. And people said, OK, let's give you a shot. We've seen how the shot has gone. And here in this city, the vast majority of people said, no more of this. And apparently all the bigotry came back, right? Everyone was very accepting and tolerant and interested in seeing how she could do. And now I guess the sexism and the homophobia and the racism has returned to the city of Chicago in her mind because she lost. I mean, what an insulting mindset. But I think it encapsulates why she has become so unpopular in the Windy City. So, Guy, I, I, maybe I'm listening to too many um, clips from Democrats because in this question, I want to look at the root causes for why she <laughs> lost. And does it really come down to crime? <laughs> People don't feel yeah. safe in the streets in Chicago. And they're like, listen, I want someone. I might like that you're a liberal and a progressive, but if I'm not safe, I can't have you, Lori Layfoot. Yep, she's alienated a lot of people in a lot of different ways. You can't just pick one factor that led to her downfall. I mean, to lose that conclusively, that dramatically, there are a lot of probably avenues that brought voters to that ultimate conclusion. But yes, if you had to highlight one overriding issue, no question about it, it is crime in the city of Chicago. I went to college here, mm -hmm. just north of the city at Northwestern. I lived at the beginning of my career for years in this city. And there were always places where you wouldn't go, where it was dangerous, where there was crime and violence. Those sort of areas have just crept further and further north into different neighborhoods where previously erstwhile safe neighborhoods just aren't anymore. And a lot of people just had enough. And I know Lightfoot would come out and say, well, look at this statistic year versus year. If you look at the broader picture from the time she took office until now, right. violent crime, murder, all of it, it's just been a disaster. And I think that's what we saw last night in terms of the results. We were showing uh, the statistics, but that these statistics, this is murder down year over year, that does not tell the story. Right. Apologies for that. A violent crime since she was pr since she promised during her inaugural address to deal with it spiked 40 percent 500 murders in 2019 they went up to 776 in 2020 and then 804 in 2021 and she lacked compassion empathy john o caldwell can tell you about the death mm -hmm. of his of his brother and her mm. non-reaction. Uh, I mean, she just completely ignored it like she ignored so many murders, so many shootings, so much pain and suffering for the people of Chicago. Guy, the Associated Press, um, this is what they had to say about her defeat. It's a sign of the turmoil in American cities following the COVID-19 pandemic. That's what AP said. Yeah. OK, fine. I mean. The pandemic was everywhere, and you'll notice that some leaders performed a lot better than others. They were rewarded, those who performed well, by the voters, and those who performed poorly for the most part fared worse or lost like Lori Lightfoot. And look, here's the thing. If I still lived in this city, I've been out of here for a dozen years. I love coming back. I wish the city could regain some of what it used to be. It's a great place. But, you know, just the fact that she's lost, I would have voted against her for sure if I still lived here. And I think it's good news that people have rejected something that was a failure. But I wouldn't, like, pop the champagne yet. There is a right. chance, a decent chance, that the next mayor could be worse than she is, depending on who wins this runoff race in a few weeks. There's one guy, Paul Vallis, who at least gives this place a fighting chance. The other guy is a union stooge, defund the police. It could get worse than Lightfoot. So let's just hold off on the celebrations for Chicago. There's a very important choice coming up. No doubt about that. And, and Guy, when you, when you roll into the Chicago airport and you have homeless sleeping in the airport, or when you go to the Magnificent yep. Mile on Michigan Avenue, which a lot of tourists will go to to shop, and you know they saw the looting and the rioting on Michigan Avenue. I mean, people are like, they're, they're done with Chicago. And you're right, it's going to be a long road uh, back and this election is important and it's an indicator. What do the people want? Do they want to go further left from Lori Lightfoot or do they want some sanity with someone who's going to support law enforcement and take crime off their streets? 20 seconds to you. 
We'll see. Um, my guess is that Vallis, who came in first place last night, might have a slight edge. But I talked to one of my colleagues on the ground here today. They think it'll be a dogfight in the campaign already getting ugly on day one, unsurprisingly. I guess we'll all circle back, what, April the 4th. Big one coming up. Did you just say circle back? <laughs> I did. In, well, in honor bringing... of the previous press secretary. No, I, no. I, next time I come to your house, I'm not bringing wine. I'm just bringing uh, my, you... my empty belly. We have plenty of wine at our house, Dagan, as you well know. Actually, not because I drank it all the last time I was there, and we had to go out in <laughs> like an Uber and find it. <laughs> Love you. It's true. We've replenished since you left. We learned yes. our lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God you. Benson, thanks.